Great. So, uh, first of all, thank you to Mike and to all the other organizers for inviting me here to speak and for bringing all of us together today. Uh, so, my name is Adam Rodriguez. I'm from the Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime. We're based in Geneva. Um, and I'm going to talk to you today about mapping smuggling networks. Basically, how did he get there? Um, so first, a little bit about us as an organization. Uh, we were founded in 2012. Uh, we are a Geneva-based uh, network of law enforcement, governance, and development practitioners. Uh, we also have a small secretariat, which uh, does a lot of our research and policy work. We are dedicated to seeking new and innovative solutions to ending organized crime in any form. This could be illegal fishing, this could be migrant smuggling, this could be drug trafficking. Um, so in order to combat such a wide range of problems, we work with a wide range of partners. We work with uh, governments, think tanks, multilateral organizations, the private sector, uh, the tech sector, anybody. So. Okay, so if we're here today to talk about migrants, why am I here today to talk about smugglers? Well, first, because they are an integral part of this whole process. We've just finished a series of interviews with almost 140 migrants in uh, reception centers in Greece, Sweden, in Italy, in Germany, and then a few before they get on the boat in in, sorry, in Egypt and in Libya. And what almost all of them have said to us is, of course, we're planning to hire a smuggler because there's no other way to get to Europe. Uh, so a couple of migrants have even said to us, this is a ridiculous question. Why are you even asking this? Everybody knows that we have to hire a smuggler. Um, and the reason why there are so many smugglers involved, uh, the recent estimates have put the number of smugglers operating within Europe at around 30,000, uh, is that there's a lot of money to be made off of this Based on our calculations, we estimate around two and a half billion US dollars a year just migrant smuggling to Europe. We're not counting migrant smuggling through Central America to the US or um, in Southeast Asia or anywhere else. So this is a large market. Uh, to compare to some of the countries that people are leaving, two and a half billion US dollars is about half of the GDP of Eritrea. So uh, you can, if you are an Eritrean, you can quite possibly do a lot better for yourself smuggling migrants than you could doing anything legal back home. Um, smugglers also have the particularity that they are involved in, to a large degree, creating the market. Migrants sometimes come to smugglers and say, we want to go from here to there. We know exactly how we want to do it. Here's the money. Take us. Often, they come to smugglers and say, we want to get out of here, period. And at that point, the smuggler gains a lot of power because the smuggler can now say, there's only one way to do it. There's only two ways to do it. They're, all of them are with me. All of them are going to cost you a lot of money. And, oh, by the way, if you try to leave, I'm going to shoot you. Um, there's, they spread rumors. They spread uh, all sorts of problems for migrants. They give migrants bad information about European regulatory regimes, about uh, everything, weather conditions, police deployments, basically everything. So the smugglers are helping drive where migrants go, perhaps even as much as migrants themselves are driving it. Um, and they obviously also help amplify the flow of migrants from one place to another by recruiting new migrants to leave and by giving incentives for civilians or uh, other migrants to recruit more migrants. So for example, there's a well-known well program in Libya where for every migrant you bring with you, you get 10% off of your fare. So you can travel for free if you bring 10 friends. Um, and they, of course, all pay full fare, but you get to travel for free. You can also travel for free across the ocean if you, if you offer to navigate the boat which sometimes is a good thing if you know how to sail or know how to, to maneuver a boat, and sometimes is a bad thing. Um, so the smugglers obviously play a very important role, uh, but why are we focused on mapping them as, as opposed to, say, more actively trying to stop 
them. And that's because mapping to us is a very important way of uh, spreading information and therefore helping resolve the situation. Because as anybody who's ever tried to buy a car can tell you, uh, an uninformed consumer is a consumer who is ripe to be taken advantage of. And this is as true with migrants as it is with anybody going to a car dealership. So uh, migrants who do not know the situation along the routes that they're traveling and don't know how much things might cost are a smuggler's favorite customers. Because the smuggler can say, it's going to cost you some huge amount of money. Um, or perhaps more problematically, the smuggler can say, how much do you have? The migrant says X. The smuggler says, okay, I'll take X. And then halfway there, give me more or else I will beat you, throw you in prison, kidnap you, rape you, any number of horrible things. Um, migrants get into the most trouble when they run out of money. Um, and in some cases, they don't have any more money. They could never have brought more with them. In other cases, in many cases, among the migrants that we've talked to, what people say is, I wish I had known how much things would cost. I wish I had known what I was going to encounter. Then I could have prepared myself better. Then I could have been mentally prepared, but also I could have been better prepared to negotiate and better prepared to argue and to push back on smugglers because there are enough smugglers that if you know what you're looking for, you can probably shop around until you find something reasonably close to it. So if we have maps that include prices and that include other information about modes of transportation and routes, um, migrants, many of whom have access to the internet at least before they leave, can have some sort of better sense of what they're getting themselves into and then be better equipped to handle it. We can also, on the flip side of that coin, hurt the smugglers by helping the migrants because we remove smugglers' ability to, or we reduce smugglers' ability to extort and to take advantage of their passengers. We can make them more passengers and less cargo. Um, we can also help ourselves by getting better prepared to know about what people might have encountered along the way. If we know that people are traveling certain routes, we can guess they're encountering, um, they, might, they might be suffering from heat stroke, they might be suffering from um, sickness from the ocean, they might be suffering from uh, trauma, physical or mental trauma from having gone through a war zone. Uh, we can be better prepared to receive them with the care that they might need when they arrive. Um, we can also help ourselves by getting a better sense of, okay, if something happens, for example, uh, a few, about two weeks ago now, uh, Hungary closed its border with Serbia. Uh, within three days, over 20,000 migrants had entered Croatia via Hungary. Now, people had sort of known that that was coming because Hungary had announced uh, and had passed a law previously announcing that they were going to do this, that they were going to close their borders. But if something like that happens more surprisingly, and we have some sort of sense of what routes migrants are taking and what routes they might be taking in smaller numbers or not taking, we might then be better able to respond when there is some sort of roadblock that gets thrown up. And then we're not scrambling to try to receive people along a secondary route. Um, and we can also, if we can track the changes in price by tracking the amount that migrants are paying, we can try to actually get some evidence about whether or not our policies are working. Because prices, as any economist would tell you, prices include uh, data about risk, the risk that the, that the, that the suppliers are taking and the, and the likelihood of success. So if a price goes up along a certain route, that probably means that either there are more migrants taking it, which we can see, or that something that we're doing along the way is more successful and is making it harder for smugglers to operate on that route. So that can be some real-time or close to real-time feedback about are our interventions being effective or not. So how would we go about creating this sort of mapping, this sort of, uh, these sort of tools? Well, at the Global Initiative, we have been creating a database that's now over 2,100 individual 
migrant journeys or segments of journeys. This, these include, for every point, we have the starting point, the ending point, the amount that the migrant paid, the year that the journey was taken, the nationality of the migrant, where we could find it, the nationality of the smuggler, which is comparatively rare, and the mode of transportation that the migrant took and any intermediate stops. So what we want to do, and this is a proposal for tomorrow, uh, for the rest of the day today and for tomorrow, hopefully, is to be able to come up, to, to, to put this data online visually and to make it available to people who are trying to migrate, to, to let them say, and to policymakers as well, to, to help people say, OK, if I want to do this, how could I get there? How much could I pay? What might I encounter along the way? Who should I expect to be talking to? You know, are the smugglers on this route uh, Libyans? Are they Sudanese? Are they Eritreans? Are they Turkish? Um, and maybe what, if I wait a little bit longer, what, what, are, the, what are the sort of the current trends along these routes? Um, and if we do it well, hopefully we can also be able to add in other uh, sort of alerts about there are abuses along this route. There are things along this route that might be coming up that would potentially make the journey more difficult. Essentially, what we're trying to do is visually, geographically, put together something for migrants to help them get more informed and to help them figure out what might be getting thrown in their, in their way. So with that, uh, I will leave it for questions. And I hope to work with you guys over the next 48 hours and create something interesting. So thank you very much. Uh, quick questions. Let's get up. Hi there. Um, this will be, you'll hear this multiple times today, but um, how do you ensure that smugglers don't use the data to just open, open up new routes? Uh, the security of this data is really important, right? So I, I think they absolutely would. I don't know that our, I don't know how much our data would help them do that. I mean, I, these, these, the smugglers are very, very smart. They've been thinking about this a lot. Um, I think that that might be, that might just be part of the cost of doing business, but I think the help for migrants will be greater than, than whatever hurt they might receive from smugglers. Um, won't it just be used by governments and Interpol to shut down the routes? That is obviously possible. Um, I think that, that is, that's probably more of a concern within Europe than outside of Europe. Um, I don't know. Perhaps maybe the right way to start is to look at it only outside of Europe, uh, insofar as, at least within Europe, there's also more, there's more of an existing support network to try to provide uh, aid to migrants. And there's, there are many more legal ways to travel already. When you're in Africa or the Middle East, that, at least in our experience, is where much more of the abuse happens, where much more of the confusion on the migrants' part happens, and also where there is much less capacity that exists to try to use this data to shut down routes. So perhaps the way to do it is to look only outside of Europe first. Really interesting, Adam. Thanks. Um, 2,100 pieces of data is great. Um, have you thought about ways we can get vastly more through crowdsourcing or scraping where people are already talking and that kind of thing? That's certainly something that we will be open to, to looking at for right now. We have had the funding and the time to do what we can do uh, internally ourselves. And sort of, I think we, want, we wanted to come up with some sort of a proof of concept that, that we could create something with a smaller amount of data that is useful. And then we can go outside and try to get more once we can say, here's what it will be, here's what it will be put into. Um, quick question for me. There's yep. been um, a couple of sort of you know, hackers have put together things like, I think somebody called refugeemaps.com or something, was there one out there? Um, and which is basically a Google map, basically, with a bunch of data, and people just add data to it as, you know, crowdsourcing it. Have you seen any of these stuff out in the wild? What's your opinion of it? Uh, is the data reliable at all? Um, so, to be honest, I have not uh, yet looked too deeply into too much of it. I know that... Um, there's a lot of data that is iffy. There's a lot of data that, that, that is not, 
let me let me let me stop at that. I think there's a lot there's a lot of data that is that is iffy. There's also a lot of data that's very useful, um, and I think that it's more a question of we've 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 put this together and we had sort of we had put this together to be used in a report um, because we don't have the tech capacity ourselves to to try to create much. Your, your data is coming from. From where? From, um, from agencies on the ground. Well, it's coming. It's coming from uh, a lot of it is coming from our own interviews or from uh, other reports from uh, from the new from new sources that we have that, that we trust from other uh, organizations that have done similar reports. Um, and so that I mean that, but it was it was done to create. Uh, to go into just a written report. We hadn't really thought too much about mm. visualizing it right. uh, until we realized that there were people out there who were interested who might be wanting to help us. So the mapping is, so. Some, uh, but the big big point I think you're gonna, trying to get across here is mapping disrupts the smugglers. Yes, absolutely, and, 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 and helps the migrants. The, empowers the migrants and the refugees. Yes. Oh, okay, we've got last, okay, there's the last two questions. Um, like I said, we're packing it in today. Keep going. Um, just a couple of points or mm -hmm. questions. One, um, would an increase in the transparency of the marketplace basically um, mean that more, making it easier for migrants to use smugglers? We know there's been an increase of people using smugglers, which could be a good or a bad thing, I guess. And the second point, um, if part of the objective is to make it harder for the smugglers, why not that, that mean that then the uh, migrants will have a harder journey and it'll be a worse journey for them kind of so they're going to use the smugglers anyway and making it ha making the routes harder or making mm -hmm. it more po problematic means that it's a worse experience as they use the smugglers. <laughs> um, so one of the things that we've seen really uh, particularly on the route from Turkey to Greece is that actually migrants, uh, the smugglers have a vested interest in maintaining a, a reputation, therefore not abusing everyone. Uh, there's particularly, uh, I say particularly from Turkey to Greece, because there are very, very active Facebook groups of migrants who are looking for smugglers, who pass around smugglers' numbers and who say, use this smuggler because he's good, don't use this smuggler because he beat up my brother, um, don't use this smuggler because he'll steal your money. So in fact, I think what we've seen in many, many instances is that Migrants will use smugglers anyway. They're pretty good at finding smugglers. If, you, if you're able to get from your home to the coast or, or if you're able to get out of your home, then you're pretty savvy. You can probably find a smuggler because there's so many of them. And that the more you increase transparency, actually the more that smugglers have to conduct themselves according to some sort of reasonable code because they're businessmen. They want to maintain their business. Okay, final question. Just a quick thought. Um, there's a couple, for anyone interested in hacking on it, there's a couple of open source tools out there doing this for other areas. So Ushahidi platform is worth checking out if you haven't looked at that. And the other one is ipaidabribe.com, which maps crowdsources um, corruption data across India as well. So what I'm saying is there's stuff to build on rather than inventing no new. Okay, great. Awesome. Thank you so much, Adam. Thank you. Thank you.